Hi, welcome to Code Hunters. In this video, we will see how we can call our REST API and get its response in JSON format. And once we get the JSON response, we will extract the required values and store it in some file. All this using UiPath. So let's start right away. We have this demo REST API endpoint. We will try to consume this. This is an online API console and we will be doing a GET request. We will paste our API endpoint here. As this is a public uh, URL, it doesn't need any kind of authorization or authentication. So we can directly go ahead and click on the send request button. As you can see, we have got the response as status 200. These are the list of users. So we will now use the same API in UiPath and try to extract the data from this response. I have launched the UiPath Studio and we will go ahead and create a process. I will call it as REST API Demo and click on the create button. Click on the open main workflow. The first thing we need to do is to do a get request to the API. For that we will need an activity called HTTP request. So let's search for the activity HTTP request. As you can see we don't have the required activity. We will go ahead and install this. This activity is found on the package called uipath.web activities. So launch the manage package and go into the official feed and let's and let's search for web active you can see uipath.web api's activities select the latest version and click on the install and save it will install the package into the project if you go into your project tab and see you have got uipath.web api.activities so now we can search for our HTTP activities and we can drag and drop our activity here and we'll provide the endpoint here and click on the OK. You can also provide the endpoint in the endpoint property of this activity as well. So next we would want to update some properties. First of all the method is get so we will select the get from here and the format of the body is application json as we will get the json response so we will update it as json as this endpoint is public api and we don't need to authenticate so we don't need to provide any username or password for the authentication else you could provide the username and password in this properties to authenticate the api and this activity will give us some output uh, we are not interested in the headers in this project for the result it is a string type so i will create a variable by pressing ctrl k and we will call it as api response next is the api status code i will call it as api status code if you go into the variable tab you can see we have created two variables one is api response which is a string type and there is api status code which is integer type so we will collapse this variable pane so our http request activity is now ready next we want to check if the response of this activity is 200 ok or not for that we will drag and drop the if activity from the activities panel and in the condition we will type if the API status code is equal to 200 then we will do our code here so first let's go into the else part by clicking on show else and we will drag a log message and we will select the log level as error we will give API code is not 200 so this will show us that if the API code is something else than 200 then it, this will show us this log message. Now if we observe carefully we can see that the response is an array of records. This is the first record. This is the another record. 
so first we need to serialize this json array for that we need an activity called serial deserialize json array we will drag and drop into our then part it needs one input which is json string the json string is our previously created variable which is api response we will give that and it will provide us as a json array output we will create another variable and we will call it as j a r r users so if you go into the variable tab we have created a variable called j a r r j a r r users as json array now we have deserialized the json array and we have got the single user array in jrr users and we can loop through this array and get the details of specific users for that we'll drag and drop the for each activity and instead of item we'll call it as users in jar users and the type argument will be json object as this user holds a json for each user we will again need to deserialize it this time we will only need to deserialize the json drag and drop the deserialize json activity and the json is users dot to string now this will give us a json object we'll create a new variable and call it user object as this will give us a user object which will hold the details of each user we will get these values and write into a csv file for that first create a csv file with the head with the headers that we need, we have so we have the headers as id comma name comma email comma gender and comma status we will save this in our project folder we'll call it as data.csv select all files and save so it will save all the values all these values in this so we can close this file and return to ui path to append these values we'll use append line activity the file is data.csv so the text will be our user object dot item and it needs the key the first key is id dot to string and we will concatenate it with the comma separated with the other files the next is the name i will copy the same thing one second and paste it the next is name and then concatenate with comma plus the third part third is email gender and status third is email then we have gender and then we have status so this will write in a line with the comma separated all the values click on ok now one last thing we need to do is to surround this complete workflow into a try catch because sometimes the api may not be accessible or may be some error so we should be able to catch it for that we can right click on this http request and click on this surround with try catch option now we'll drag this if sequence into this try section so this is our complete try block and in the catch we'll select the exception as system exception and we'll drag a log message here we'll 
will give this uh, error and we'll give the message as exception dot message so this will let us know if there is any error with the api now we are ready to run this process so let's run it so in the output you can see the run is completed we can go to our project folder and we have this data file we'll let's open this data file as you can see we have all the details of the users that were returned by the api we have the name we have the email address we have the gender and the status so this is how you extract the data from a json response using ypath hope this video has helped you see you in the next video thanks